What's up everyone, Sam Sharp here. In today's video, we are going to talk about down payment assistance programs as well as other types of programs that can provide some type of financial benefit when you're looking to buy a home. There are not just programs that give you money for down payment and closing costs, but there are also programs that can have benefit later down that continue long after you purchase the property. And we'll talk about those later in the video. Um, so if you like this type of information, if you want to learn more about how to save money when you buy a home or possibly use the best possible loan product for you when you do buy a home, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that we can stay in touch. Jumping right in, I think that down payment assistance programs have become even more important right now in the rising interest rate environment as well as with inflation. You know, things are expensive. We've, we've printed a lot of, there's a lot more dollars out there than there is the supply of goods, which is causing this unfortunate balance that we're seeing and things are just really expensive. So any help that we can get, the better. And there are some things to look at when you go at considering a down payment assistance program. And I think that, you know, when you look at it out of the gate, a lot of people think like, okay, first time home buyers programs. It's important to note that these programs are not just available for first time home buyers. You can actually purchase a home if you're in a position where you, you've owned a home or maybe even still own a home, some of these programs are still available as long as you meet the requirements. So let's talk about some of the requirements that are out there for popular down payment assistance programs. These programs are going to be different from one area to the next. For example, some of these programs are offered statewide, so they'll only be offered in California or Illinois or you know one of these different states. Otherwise, there are other programs that are specific to a geographic area within that state, so maybe only county-specific. Um, for example, in Chicago, we have programs that are only available in the city of Chicago. So you want to make sure, first and foremost, that you're looking at the programs that are available in the areas that you're considering and then seeing what the benefits are. When I speak with clients, they immediately want to look at this and say, hey, all right, what's out there? What type of loan can we look at? You know, what's, what are your interest rates? What are the best way to go about this? So I, I like to try and first make sure that we qualify because it doesn't do any good to look into a specific type of program if you don't meet the eligibility requirements. And these can be much different than what goes into just applying for and getting approved for a mortgage or a standard conventional loan. So starting there, or continuing there, I should say, one of the first things that we look at will be the credit score requirements. So these types of programs are going to be generally following some set guidelines that are tied to a bond that funds these programs. These programs are on a funding available basis, meaning that there has to be money available. Makes sense. And within those funds that are provided or those bonds, there are set parameters. Credit score is one of them. In a lot of, time, a lot of cases, you'll see a minimum credit score requirement 640, 620, it's going to hit a flat number like that, but you want to make sure first and foremost that you meet the credit score requirements because if you don't, you can't use the program. And of course, if you don't at that time, talk to a lender about how you can look to improve your credit. Maybe you're, you're closed or maybe there's something you can do. Just because you can't qualify for the program now doesn't mean that you can't look at this as an option later down the road. Next in line, income restrictions. A lot of these programs have been designed to help stimulate the underserved areas. So areas where people are, you know, they're making below the median income for an area. So they're, you know, obviously lower income tract levels. So the city will set up these census tracts, which will determine the average income in an area. And these programs are targeted towards areas that have lower to moderate income. They're not necessarily just handing money out to people who are out there, you know, that are living and, and just looking for free money. That's not exactly the design of these programs. So you want to look at the income restrictions and that can vary if you are in one of those targeted areas, although it's not required. Just, you know, if you're, if you are buying in a different area that fits within the, the requirements like city of Chicago, for example, you don't necessarily have to be buying in a specific neighborhood, but you do have to make sure you meet those income requirements. And I'll give you a good example. We uh, have a program that's very popular, the Open Doors program, which is offered through IDA. IDA is the Illinois Housing Development Authority. And they offer this program and their income limits just increased up to about $132,000 for the loan applicant. So when you're looking at using these types of programs, you want to make sure that you stay within those income requirements, because if you make more money than that maximum amount, you can't use the program. You also want to make sure that they're, how they determine that amount 
for example, some programs may look at household income. So if you're a married couple and you're applying for this type of loan, you might find yourself in a position where only one of you is actually purchasing the home because there's a benefit to that for whatever reason. Maybe you're trying to qualify for the income limits, right? Because that's what some people will do with some of these programs. We'll say, look, you can qualify just in one name and then your income doesn't exceed those limits and now you can use that type of program. But be careful because some of these programs will look at household income. And this means that they're saying like, okay, even though you're the one on the loan, you're married and your household income is above the actual required limits. So, or those, you know, where that ceiling on there. So be careful, make sure that the program you're looking at does not put you in a position where they're gonna look at the household and now you don't qualify, right? Um, so next in line, purchase price limits. These programs will have a ceiling on how high of a property uh, property price that you can have, right? And that can change from a single family home to a two unit because these can be these programs can be a great way to finance multi-unit properties as well. But make sure that you're talking to your lender and you're aware about what are the limits on the price point on that so that way the property that you're buying doesn't keep you from qualifying as well. And then one of the last things I'll bring up as far as qualifying for these types of loans will be your income ratios. And this is basically how much of your income goes towards your debts, your monthly income towards your monthly debts. Now, most of these programs will have a hard and fast deadline at 45% of your total monthly income. So if you made $1,000 a month, then you could not make more than 400 or have more than $450 in debt. Let's use a more realistic example. Let's say you make $10,000 a month. Well, that means your total expenses cannot exceed $4,500. That's 45% of that, of that figure. And this includes the property, uh, the mortgage on the property that you're buying and all the carrying costs, such as HOA dues, homeowners insurance, property taxes, and then your other debts that report to your credit report, such as, you know, credit cards, student loans, things of that nature. It is important to note that there are a lot of liabilities that don't report to your credit report that will not be considered. For example, car insurance, cell phone bills, a lot of utilities, these do not actually report. If you're looking at buying your first home, rental income, right? You're buying a home to live in. So we don't consider the amount you're paying in rent now necessarily because that won't be an ongoing expense. But regardless, the total of these expenses plus your new mortgage, we have to make sure that that figure stays below 45% of your monthly income. And again, that income has to stay within that threshold. We can safely use $10,000 now because in most cases, that's where that, that total income is uh, set at. So another good factor just to consider is making sure you're in that position. So for a quick recap, you want to make sure that your credit score is in line and that you meet the requirements. You want to make sure that you do not make too much money and you meet the requirements for the program as far as those income levels and those restrictions. You also want to make sure that you don't have too much debt. You're not in a position where you're going through and you have more of your monthly income going towards those monthly debts. So you won't qualify from there. And then, of course, going through and looking at this, you want to also make sure that the loan program qualifies for the area that you're looking in and that it's not restricted. Um, so those are some higher level items to look at when you're considering just overall qualifying for this type of loan. Now, as far as the types of programs that are out there, again, this varies from one area to the next, state to state, county to county or city. So there are ways to look at this. So you have programs that will provide down payment assistance. And this is money that can be limited to go just towards your down payment. One thing that I like to point out, these programs usually will have a minimum requirement as far as how much money you're putting down. So it may not mean that you have no money down. You may still have a threshold. A lot of times this will be 1% of the purchase price. So if you're purchasing a $300,000 home, you have to have $3,000 of your own money going towards the product. Not always, but it's just something to look out for when you're looking at these types of programs. But you know, going through and looking at that, down payment assistance programs can provide money to bridge that gap. Maybe you're trying to put 5% down and this will give you the additional funds to make that, that ends meet as far as how much you have out of your pocket versus the program. In other cases, the money can be split up. You can use the money towards down payment or closing costs, or again, maybe just closing costs. So make sure when you're looking at the type of loan program, you know what that money can be used for. And then from there, talk to your lender about how you're using that money. Again, maybe you're in a position where you're planning to put 3% down and this program will provide you enough money to hit that marker. Now you're going to use your contribution. Again, I was saying 1%, let's say of $300,000. So your $3,000 is going towards the closing costs. 
Well, consider there might be benefits if you can increase and use your money plus that down payment assistance to hit a different threshold, like 5% down. This could mean lower private mortgage insurance. So depending on the type of loan that you're qualifying for, you may have an overall lower monthly expense because now you're using that down payment assistance in addition with your own funds to meet some type of threshold like that. So when you're going through and you're looking at how to use those funds, talk to a lender about what's the best way to meet your goal. Is it less pocket out, less out of pocket every month on your monthly payment, or is it less out of pocket initially at the closing table? This brings me to a different type of program that you should also be aware of. These are what we call mortgage credit certificate programs, MCC programs. In the city of Chicago, we have a great program called the Tax Smart program, and this is not limited to Chicago. There are, well, that program is, but these types of programs are not limited to Chicago. But the way that these programs work, they will provide you a benefit that long, it goes on long past when you buy the home. It's actually, you don't even see a benefit when you initially close. Instead, you'll receive a tax credit certificate every year that can be applied when you file your income taxes. And for example, this program in the city of Chicago's Tax Smart program, this allows someone to receive a refund for up to $2,000 of the interest that they've paid on their home annually. It's 25% of your interest that you pay capped at $2,000. And that will continue as long as you live in the home. So for example, if someone was to use this program, they could be in a place where they're getting $2,000 back every year that they've lived in the home when they file their income taxes. So $20,000 10 years later, which can be a great benefit. You can't always combine this loan program with one of the down payment assistance programs. So make sure you're aware of if they can be used or combined together and talk to your lender about that. Um, and there can be some benefits. If you can start to stack these on top of each other, you can start to find some real savings. But on the flip side, let's say that you can't. Maybe one program, a down payment assistance program is going to give you $6,000. You don't necessarily need the money up front, but it would be nice. Well, on the flip side of things, maybe a program like this would be beneficial you know, if you can't combine the two, maybe you're still better off taking the program that allows you to go forward and receive tax benefits every year because in the long run, you'll save more money. So you just have to figure out what's going to work best for you. These are just some of the options that are out there, right? Talk to a lender, find out what works for you, what works for the type of property you're looking to buy, what works for your budget. You know, again, are you looking for money that will save something that will save you money at the closing table or you're looking for something that will save you more money down the road. But regardless, find the combination that works best for you. For more information on these types of programs and more videos, again, make sure you, you subscribe, like these videos, and we look forward to bringing you more in the future.